Hey there, just quickly. This video is actually part of a much larger video that I uploaded on the 11th of May. Be sure to check that out if you want to watch all of it at once, but I thought I'd make little versions because I know 4 hours can be quite daunting to some people. So here is the second Doctor's era and let's get straight into it. Season 4 started to show a lot of changes for the show itself. Doctor Who had really started to go into a problem and Season 3's ratings had come to an all-time low. Something drastic and new needed to change, both in front and behind the camera. Honestly, Season 3 is, like I said, not very good. But Season 4 is when I think they really start to hit their stride with the black and white era. And let's start that off straight away with... Power of the Daleks is definitely an odd story, but in all the right ways. This is the first introduction to the second Doctor and his only story without companion Jamie, who's introduced in the next serial. This story is once again missing, but like with a lot of second Doctor stories, he's very popular with the animation reconstructions. And yeah, this story is cool. It's all about the Daleks showing a lot more of a scheming side that we hadn't seen since the original story. And yeah, Ben and Polly are great. I love all the scenes of them trying to figure out who the Doctor is now with his second incarnation. Patrick Troughton, despite us not being able to physically see his performance, just through the way he uses his voice alone, automatically intriguing and I really like his portrayal right from the get-go. Especially with how different he is from the first Doctor and how strange he is overall. I also love the return of the more fascist roots for the Daleks themselves, definitely following a bit more on their Nazi inspirations, which is cool. And yeah, overall, great story and a great introduction to the second Doctor. The Highlanders is the last historical for a very long time for the show, as the new producers wanted to really change it and go for a more sci-fi feel for a sci-fi show, which... Yeah, I think that's fair enough. This is also the story that introduces Jamie, who had gone to be the second longest running companion in Doctor Who history, behind 13th Doctor companion Yaz. And yeah, Jamie's immediately an awesome companion. It's no wonder that he originally started off as a one-time character and was brought onto the TARDIS team full-time. Jamie is just very interesting. I also love the comedy of this story where Polly basically just keeps blackmailing this guard from like the British army, who just every time he sees her just sounds more and more defeated. But with this story being completely missing, a lot of the visual aspects that this story relied on just aren't there. And because of that, even with the reconstruction, I can't tell what's going on most of the time. So it ends up being more of a mixed bag than anything. I do think that if this story was ever animated, I would change my opinion on it. The Underwater Menace is definitely another weird story. The animation just came out today as well, and I will be looking forward to seeing it. My issues with The Underwater Menace, though, is that I think it's a good story that has already been told multiple times before in the show by this point. Nothing new is brought to the table, and despite the cast being great and this being Jamie's first proper adventure in the TARDIS, not much really happens. I find it overall kind of bland. Even the new elements, which I do think are really good, they still feel like they're retreading just with a new coat of paint. It's a problem throughout the entire story and even Patrick Troughton's performance feels like it's from Power of the Daleks again. It's strange, I don't really like it but I definitely don't hate it either. This is a very mixed story for me overall. Sorry to Underwater Menace fans. The Moonbase is the first non-Dalek story to actually have a recurring villain, this time with the previously shown Cybermen. And yeah, there's a reason why they were brought back only four stories later. It's because they are cool, and I love Cybermen. This is another Base Under Siege story, and honestly, its biggest problem is that it feels like a rehash of the 10th planet, but instead of it being the first Doctor, it's now the second. And as much as I really enjoy some elements of it, especially Jamie meeting his first more alien-styled villain compared to the Underwater Menace, it still just feels like the 10th planet again, kind of rehashing stuff in a similar way that the Underwater Menace did, but in my opinion, 
much better, mostly due to the character interactions being a lot more interesting. And also the Cybermen have already been redesigned and they're still absolutely terrifying. This is a good story that's just a little bit muddled. The Mega Terror is amazing. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm sorry, like this, some people hate this story and it's about giant crabs that are super intelligent and control a population and there's no such thing as macro. I don't even know why I'm honestly making this. There's just like a blank thing on my reviews and it says macro, but I know there's no such thing as macro. There, there is no such thing as macro. Onto the Faceless Ones now, which is the seventh story of this season, because, you know, no such thing as macro. <laughs> so this is actually the last eighth story of the show, until the revived era, which is weird to think about. And it's a great one to go out on for this length of storytelling per season. I really enjoy the Faceless Ones. My only complaint, honestly, is that Ben and Polly do basically get written out partway through the story and don't appear until the very end. But new pseudo-companion Samantha, great name, is a really cool character that I wish was able to stay around. The actual faceless ones themselves are disturbing. This is another story that is missing, thus the animated version that is on screen. And it's still cool. The animation in this story is really, really top-notch in my opinion, which I haven't really mentioned before. But yeah, this story is great. Really damn fun. A little bit long at times, but yeah, definitely would recommend. Evil of the Daleks is a rarity for the classic era as it continues straight after Ben and Polly's departure in the previous one and is, for the first episode at least, kind of a sequel to the Faceless Ones without actually continuing the story. This also introduces us to Victoria, who would be the brand new companion for the rest of the next season, sort of, and it's a good introduction to her. I'm not the biggest fan of Victoria as a character overall, but this is definitely a very strong introduction for her. The rest of the story is also great, minus one episode, which drags on for way too long. And the supporting cast in this are honestly awesome. I wish they were able to come back for later stories. And the Babby Daleks are some of my favourite things in the entirety of Doctor Who. Oh yeah, this is a Dalek story. I completely forgot to mention that. Yeah, the Daleks are awesome in this one. Probably the most menacing they'd ever been. And definitely the most scheming they'd ever been. It's a good finale to them as it was originally written. And yeah, overall this story is great. And that was season four, minus the first two Hartnell stories and going straight from the start of Troughton. And as you can see from our rankings, oh yeah, I'm a big fan of just the Troughton stories of this era. There's a couple of little duds, especially when we change it over to my actual rankings. As you can see, both the Highlanders and the Underwater Menace, I'm not the biggest fan of. But overall, this season is such an improvement on the past three, in my opinion. And yeah, in all honesty, it only gets better from here with the next one. Season 5 is the first of the two fully second Doctor seasons of the classic era. And I'm only just going to say off the bat, this is probably my favourite of the black and white and you'll soon see why I rate it so highly. A lot of stuff about this season just feels right and as we get a bit more into it, you'll really see the second Doctor come into his own here, instead of being a little bit overshadowed by the first Doctor. This season also had a reduced serial count at the behest of Patrick Trout and the Second Doctor to be seven serials instead of the previous nine, ten and nine again. Something which I feel is much better for the show as it does actually let the stories breathe a little bit better without having to rush constantly and without the ridiculous amount of episodes that season three especially had. But enough of all that little intro -y stuff, let's get right into season five. Kicking off the season is Tomb of the Cybermen and wow, what a step up for intros to the season. Tomb of the Cybermen is, honestly I'm just going to state it right now, one of the greatest of all time Doctor Who stories. Everything about it is damn near perfect and the stuff that isn't damn near perfect 
is only not near because it is perfect. The supporting cast are all absolutely brilliant in their roles. The Cybermen are completely terrifying and menacing, even nowadays at times. The second Doctor is completely on point. Jamie is completely on point. Victoria has an amazing moment with the second Doctor, which really shines her as a character. And yeah, I can't add much more. This story is incredible. Please definitely go out and watch it. It's all on iPlayer now. You have no excuse. The Abominable Snowman is one of the most interesting concepts for a Doctor Who story by this point. Literally taking a more myth slash legend styled villain and turning it into a Doctor Who villain. And honestly, I really love the concept of this episode. What I really wish for is that it was four parts instead of six. This episode for me, despite most people really enjoying it, I can only give it a five out of ten. This story is so mixed for me. I enjoy so many aspects of it. All the stuff with Victoria and the Great Intelligence is really interesting. Jamie and the Second Doctor is really cool once again. But the story shouldn't be six episodes. I'm sorry, it just doesn't have enough to have that runtime. I love the Yetis, I love the Great Intelligence's reveal. But if this was a four part, I feel like I could rate it much higher than a five. But this story is so mixed to me because I got bored. And it's a shame. The X Warriors are the best villains in Doctor Who. Please fight me in the comments because a lot of people don't like them and they are wrong. I love this story. Everything about this story is so cool to me because it has Ice Warriors in it. And I could literally fill up this entire minute talking about it just mentioning Ice Warriors. But then I have to remember that the rest of the plot also exists, and it's really damn boring if an Ice Warrior's not in it. When the Ice Warriors are in it, it's a 10 out of 10, but they're only in this story for about half the runtime, so the rest of the runtime would be a free. <laughs> like, I'm not even going to pretend as much as I do love the Ice Warriors. I'm not joking about that. I do really love them. This story is slow, it's boring, and overall... Despite the technological aspects being really cool for the time, not much else happens. I don't even really need to mention the main cast because they don't do much. But this story has an ice warrior in it, so that makes it go from mixed to good. Deal with it. Enemy of the World is another interesting concept, kind of in a similar vein to the Abominable Snowmen. With this story focusing completely around an evil, capitalist, nutjob, terrorist, supervillain, bond villain kind of thing. But they look like this Doctor. And they're both played by Patrick Troward. And it's a really cool story with the fact that the companions are completely confused throughout just being like, Oh, hi Doctor, and Scaramanga, the villain, responds with, Who the hell's the Doctor? And they go up to the Doctor and be like, oh, hi, Scaramanga. And the Doctor's like, who the hell's Scaramanga? <laughs> it's all really cool. And I love the ending, especially the split shot with Patrick Trout and playing both characters on the screen at the same time in the 1960s. All really cool. I just wish it wasn't a six-parter because, my God, does the middle section of this story get so incredibly boring that not even being hyperbolic... I fell asleep when I first saw this story. I'm glad I rewatched it and enjoy it a lot more, but I can't give it any more than a good. I'm sorry, guys. Time for this season to have another all time classic for me, and that is The Web of Fear. Whilst my opinions on the Abominable Snowman were a lot more mixed, The Web of Fear is an absolute classic, completely claustrophobic, basically the introduction of Unit before they were called Unit terrifying at times the yeti is so cool the great intelligence is an awesome villain and it's no wonder they brought him back so quickly victoria has so much to do in this story but it's actually kind of exciting to see her do something notice how i've not mentioned her for the past three stories yeah this story is absolutely great and the second doctor has some of his best moments in his entire run also the introduction to brigadier lethbridge too I'll get used to hearing that name guys yeah, this story is amazing. My only issues with it is that it is a little bit too long. Could have been a five pattern, but otherwise, absolutely amazing. Solid nine out of ten. Mm -hmm. 
time for another episode that I originally didn't have the strongest feelings on, like Enemy of the World. But this time I grew to really enjoy it. Fury from the Deep is one of the weirdest stories of the entire show, with literal murder seaweed. Yes, seaweed that kills people. And somehow the show makes it work. Honestly, it makes the possessions a bit creepy and terrifying at times. But in a way that's also silly in the way that only Doctor Who could get away with it. This is also the final story for Victoria and she does so much in this story that it feels almost like she's a completely different character. But honestly, I'm here for it. I love all the possession stuff. I love how terrifying and horror-esque this story is. I love how one of the characters you're led to believe is a villain, but actually is just a bit of a dick that comes through in the end. Yeah, this story is great. I really enjoy it. And honestly, by the end of it, I felt it was a shame to let Victoria go. The Wheel in Space is fine. The introduction for Zoe as a companion, despite her going on to be one of my favourites, is fine. The second Doctor and Jamie in this story are fine. The Cybermen and the threat levels in this story are fine. This is the most fine slash average story in Doctor Who history by this point. And honestly, that's kind of a problem with it. The first two episodes especially feel like they were originally one episode that was spread out to be two instead. And in honestly, episodes three and four feel like they were originally one episode that was spread out to two. This story is boring at times, but not in a way that's actually boring. It's strange to explain. It just feels very run of the mill, shut your brain off and just watch. The Cybermen are cool and everything, but yeah, this story is the most fine thing from Fine City, from the planet Fine. Yeah, season five is definitely a huge step up in my opinion. It feels like everything that season four wanted to be, but was still struggling with Hartnell's health. And yeah, it really does just feel like a rejuvenation that the show needed. It has the first 10 out of 10 I've given a story thus far. And even the worst episodes, I've only given them fives. Like, that's how good this season is. Even the worst ones are still watchable. They're still fine. And as you can see here from my ratings, yeah, the lowest is a five. The rest of them are seven and above. In fact, the overall average is the first seven so far. And that's pretty telling, in my opinion. And changing it over to the rankings, obviously Tomb of the Sidemen at number one, that was never a question. And the rest of them, all pretty good. These will all be pretty highly rated by the time I get to the overall rankings. It would be such a shame if something came along as an entire season and completely destroyed my perception of the black and white era. Season 6 is the final season with the second Doctor Patrick Troughton, as well as Jamie, played by Fraser Hines, and new companion Zoe, who is the only companion of the second Doctor's era, apart from Jamie, to actually be there at the start and end of the season. Kind of weird to think about that. But yeah, season 6 is also the last of the production team of seasons 3 at the very end, 4 and 5, and the steam train had definitely started to run out by this point. You'll see what I mean when we go into the first story. The Dominators is a story that I have seen three times in total. And every single time I watch this story, no matter what I do, no matter what I try to do, by episode two, I start to fall asleep. Every time I've watched this story, I get so incredibly bored, so incredibly annoyed at the boringness of the villains, the boringness of the damn quarks, the boringness of even our main characters, I start to fall asleep. This story should not be a five-parter. This story should be a one-parter to finally save my brain from ever having to sit through it ever again. It is so incredibly bland, boring and basic. I am shocked that this was ever actually released in the way it was. This is the 1 out of 10 for the classic era and some people may try and defend it, but I'm sorry, 
this is the worst of not just the black and white era, but the entirety of the classic era. The Mind Rubber is another strange story, and I'll be honest, a definite step up from the Dominators, but I also think just watching the gunfighters repeat in it for an entire day is probably better than the Dominators. The Mind Rubber really tries the more weird aspects of the second season's The Chase, with the dream slash not real fictional characters in the universe, where the Doctor and Co go to a parallel universe, which is all fictional characters. And it's really cool. I love the concept. I love the set design. I love how interesting Zoe gets throughout this story. I just wish it wasn't five parts. The first episode especially is just the main cast in the TARDIS and nothing happens for 20 minutes. The next episode, not much happens either apart from introducing the world. The cast don't get much to do. And it's really in the last three episodes that it starts to get interesting. It's just a shame the first two drag on as long as they do. This is still a good story though. Definitely enjoyable. The Invasion is an amazing story, trapped inside the body of a good story. Now, don't get me wrong, I know the fans love this one and I really enjoy it. But at the end of the day, this is an eight part story which just doesn't need to be that long. Device Vaughn is a really good villain throughout, but Everything else, including the Cybermen themselves, feel a bit of a step down. One of the other positives is definitely Unit, but even then, they don't get much to do until the final two episodes. Once again, bringing into my issues of pacing that this story has, I do really enjoy the invasion. The second Doctor especially is on top form. Jamie's great, Zoe's great, Unit and the Brigadier are great. Even some of the supporting characters, like the journalist, really cool, really interesting. I just wish this was six parts instead, and it might even be a nine out of 10, but it's good. It's a seven out of 10. It's a good story still. The Curtains is definitely continuing the stream of good, but not great stories. I do really enjoy this one a lot more than other fans do. I love the conversations between the Doctor and Zoe. Really funny to see that Zoe is actually smarter than the Doctor, according to this test. And the crowns themselves as villains are kind of fun, very cheesy, very 60s, very Doctor Who. Everything else about the story, however, is just a bit slow. I really enjoy the aspects of this weird, futuristic, kill the smartest ones thing to keep the robots in power but it's revealed at the start of basically episode two, the ending of episode one, and nothing really changes after that. It's all just the same stuff throughout the rest of the story, and it really is a shame, but still, it's a good, very fun story. Seeds of Death is essentially the Ice Warriors again, but with an actual plot that's actually good. The Ice Warriors, once again, are my favourite classic villain of the entire show next to the Daleks and yeah it's awesome seeing him with an actual plot this time. This story is honestly amazing. The actual concept of the Seeds of Death, really cool. I love all the stuff with the second Doctor bantering with the Ice Warriors towards the end of the story. Jamie and Zoe once again being a great little duo throughout and yeah this story is amazing. I can't add any more to it. If the story didn't have Ice Warriors, it'd be great. But once again, I love Ice Warriors, so it gives an extra point. It's absolutely amazing. Love it. Now time for stuff to drop significantly. The Space Pirates is a story where the Doctor and Companions aren't really in it until the last three episodes, and it's a six pattern. And it literally revolves around some Space Pirates going to a space station, blowing up the space station and then going on to the next space station whilst the space authority people go, oh my god, they've blown up another space station. It is that for four out of the six episodes. Then episode five has the Doctor actually meeting the main villain for three seconds and the last episode is literally an entire 25 minute long episode of them defusing a bomb. This is written by Robert Holmes who previously did the Crotons and will go on to be one of the best writers for Doctor Who that this is definitely a massive blemish on his career. It is so boring, so bad, 
but I'd still rather watch this again over the Dominators. It's awful, but it's not the worst of all time. For the final second Doctor story, we have The War Games, and honestly, this story is great. It's ten parts, and most of the time doesn't feel like it, because the storytelling is written that well. My issue comes with the middle section of The War Games. The start section is really interesting. The ending is one of the greatest endings to any story of all time, but the middle section of The War Games does drag on a little bit. And when it's 10 episodes in total, one episode dragging on is a bit of an inconvenience, but three episodes dragging on is boring. Everything else though about this, including the set design, the supporting cast, the main cast, the plot itself, the war chief, all awesome. Love it all. I just wish it was an eight pattern instead of a 10. And I really do think this would be another greatest of all time for me. I know for most fans it is, but for me personally, it's just a little bit too long, just by a couple of episodes. Still though, absolutely great. Season 6 definitely has its strong points, such as the Seeds of Death and the War Games. It has some good stories as well, throughout most of it. And then there's two of the worst of all time. And yeah, they are genuinely two of the worst of all time. It really does damage season six, and especially Patrick Troughton's final season, after such a good run up until this point. The damage that those two stories do, as you can see here by the ratings, really do stand out compared to the other five stories. And when we change it to the rankings, the rankings just makes it even more abundantly clear the massive difference that those two stories make for this season. I do wish that they didn't exist so Troughton could go off with another bang, but at the end of the day, season six is the worst the show has been so far, and it's honestly a shame to me. But with that out of the way, thank you very much for watching. Be sure to join us next week when we do the third Doctor's Era, or you can go watch the big video if you'd like. And yeah, toodles! <laughs>